to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet. Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, please look up everyone. We have limited time. God is a God of times and seasons. He dwells in light, but his dealings with men is fragmented into times and seasons. Listen carefully. That means for every season, there is what God is doing. Are we together? And the character of his operation is that there are graces and distributions of spiritual possibilities are located for seasons that follow his word it looks like he's following men but it follows his word is because the men receive his word that's why it follows them the power of god does not follow men it follows his word and if that word is in men it will seem to follow men are we together now so for every season there is what god is doing it is important for you to understand this because this is where many people miss out if good to see you guys let me start using you up front now watch this in 2019 there is a grace and a spiritual allocation are we together now in 2020 watch this it does not cancel this grace in addition to it there is now a supply of another dimension that necessitates that this season reflects the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So God is a God of times and seasons. I'm saying this because um, now I love the body of Christ. But there are people who believe that prophetic words are just a church thing. It is not true. It is not true. Prophetic words guide operations of the spirit in the earth. On the fifth day of the seventh day, God did this. The word of the Lord came. It ties time to it. On the seventh day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. So God is a God of times and seasons. Now, the way God works, please look up again. Globally, there is what God is doing. Ah, my God. I'm seeing a dove resting on five people. One, two, three four five you're my glory the lifter up of my hands please sit down we have to rush now understand this globally there is what the spirit of god is doing across the earth and then territorially there is what god is doing the hand of the lord is upon this fair lady my dear i'm seeing an angel pour oil on you and the lord is saying to tell you he's giving you beauty for ashes he's giving you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness please bring for me the person who will run out by the anointing now just the hand of god is resting on someone i just saw an angel of the lord move don't worry we are going to walk with time will not stay unnecessarily late i saw a grace just one person running by the spirit The Lord is bringing restoration to you, my dear. The Lord is saying he's bringing restoration, restoration, restoration by his spirit. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Because the program of God is based on covenants. Now, watch this. This is where the concept of spiritual tribes come. Tribes are spiritual allocations. Watch this. It's not just a group of people following men. No. God, the way God operates is that he distributes his dimensions by covenant. 
So when he wants a dimension of his spirit to find expression in a generation, he will find a man. Then enter a covenant with that man. Not Old and New Testament. The covenant becomes the authorized allowance. That will be the ordination for the activity of the spirit with respect to that dimension. Are we together now? This is where the concept of tribes coming. That means in God's global assignment, there is an allocation for people groups, spiritual people groups. Because there are graces that represent the covenant of every tribe. And there are times that God is doing something in the earth and he will need a corporate people who are carrying that grace. This is where prophetic words come. It looks like men of God all over the world are speaking nonsense, but it's not so. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit synergizing the dealings of God. So when God speaks, it is important that we need. Hallelujah. The Lord declared to us by his spirit that 2020 is a year of dominion. And truly speaking, believe me, it is not a cliche. It is not just a want for a theme. It is what God is doing in this season. Through us as a family of faith. Write this down, please. Very quickly and then we'll pray. Our time is gone. Dominion means sovereign control sovereign control someone is going to begin to prophesy the word of the Lord is upon a people please don't mind me do the things that I'm doing the word of the Lord it's not it's not it's not something that is you see prophecy is not these things that people do it comes from the boil of the spirit the speakings of god through vessels for the edification of the saints now watch this please dominion means sovereign control it means influence Dominion means government, a system of legislating the will of a man, enforcing the will of a king is dominion. Hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So believers are corporately called into the life of dominion. It is true that in Christ, all believers are corporately called into the life of dominion. However, however, there are seasons where the Spirit of God seeks to enforce the purposes of Christ upon the earth and within a territory. And dominion, I wrote something down here, the dominion of the saints in the earth is the only way the name and the purposes of God will be enthroned in the hearts of men. It is through the instrument of dominion that will enforce Christ across territories. This is very important. So when God says it's a year of dominion, he means it's a year of influence. He means it's a year of control. A dimension of spiritual power like never seen before. A dimension of the operation of the spirit. The investment of heaven upon men like gods upon the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Over principalities and powers. The cry for dominion is a cry to see the fullness of God find expression within a territory. This is very important. Please write this very quickly. There are four keys that the Lord gave me that will control the operation of the dominion of the saints even in this season. Number one, and I've been teaching this a bit as I travel around, is the restoration of the ordinances of priesthood priesthood is a dimension that believers do not understand it's more than prayer the priesthood dimension of the saints is a, a lot many people pray but few people understand priesthood and we have insulted our forefathers we have insulted the altars in our regions and instead of us to be able to learn spiritual lessons 
the operation of darkness has prevailed for many centuries in territories through the mystery of priesthood to the point that even when the custodian of the altars went their presence or their absence did not affect the continuity of those programs it may have been invoked by diabolic powers but it's still a principle the ordinance of priesthood that believers can come to a point where we sustain an intelligence to stand upon our watch like habakkuk and make things happen upon the earth at a corporate scale not just healing of one head not just prophesying to one person no invoking things from a point and having the effect within a territory that's priesthood a priest does not go around a city but he controls the city a priest will stay in a shrine and manipulate the elements of the supernatural to communicate a language everyone must hear elijah was not in a radio station elijah stayed in a position and commanded that there be no rain it was not prophecy that was pursued so the first key that will establish the dominion of the saints is priesthood it just so happens that the foundation of priesthood for the believer is prayer but that is not the only dimension of priesthood hallelujah jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer not i will respond i will answer i will answer by showing you great and marvelous things which thou knowest not number two let's hurry up very quickly the second key to the dominion of the saints is light the mystery of light that means this year will be a feast of light dimensions of spiritual illumination listen we must trust god in this day to step into a dimension of a, of uncanny spiritual exactitude that means that we understand the operations that are responsible for the results that are desired job 29 the first 11 verse the first 11 verses please let's hurry up job 29 moreover look up please job continued his parable and said to oh that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me three this is the mystery when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness we're reading to 11 as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle five when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil when i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the streets the young men look at the effect of access feasting upon these truths the young men saw me and hid themselves the aged arose and stood up nine the princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth 11 when the ear heard me then it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me dominion the dominion power of light john chapter 1 and verse 5 the bible says the light shineth in darkness the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there are truths that are responsible for every result in the kingdom please look up i believe that we are going to step into truths that the bible calls the hidden truths that were kept and now are revealed by his holy apostles and prophets are truths that have been kept not because the ancient could not access it it was not their season when he gave john the vision he says seal it is for an appointed time in other words there is a generation where this will be unveiled to the light of god number three the third key to our dominion is the power of results productivity results i believe in results it is the end of all arguments 
Result is powerful. It compels. Result compel. It is true. We must trust God for a grace to step into dimensions of results that defy argument. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 31. We'll read the first five verses. The building of the tabernacle. The Lord spake unto Moses saying to see I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri the son of Hor of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Look at this. Verse 4. To devise cunning works. To work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones. To set them and in carvings of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. There is a grace that makes for productivity. There is a grace that controls result. Look at the kind of hard elements this man worked on. Gold, brass, timber. There was nothing cheap and nothing mediocre. Yet he had the ability to coordinate them to produce something valuable. There is a grace that must come upon the saints in this season. To be productive always in dimensions that defy argument. Productivity. Number four. And this is very, very important. Very, very important. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, you keep that scripture there. Truly, you can be full of power falsely. It says, truly, I am full of power, but that power came by the Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in this season must be a guarded treasure in the life of believers. Please listen to me. Not just the pursuit of power, not just the pursuit of miracles, signs and wonders. We must restore the fellowship of the Spirit. This is where this ministry is founded upon the grace of our Lord and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the koinonia, the fellowship of the Spirit. I am full of power, not just by prayer, but by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The evidence of his presence in your life, known to all and sundry, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. The power of the Holy Ghost is important. There is no dominion without power and authority. Not assumed power, not purported power. Power that is valid and is provable here and now. Hallelujah. It is the manifestation of the power of God commanding strange results in the lives of the saints that will compel the heathen and anyone around to know that there is a God, that God in the midst of his people is not present, is mighty. The Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. The might of God is a dimension that by God's grace we will experience this year in non-precedented portions. To the point that they looked at Paul and Barabbas and they, 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 they called them Zeus and Hermes, Greek gods. What manner of grace, what manner of spiritual investment. Many people pray, but they do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, many people hear God, but they don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are three things I know about relating with the Holy Spirit. Number one. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit is atmosphere dependent. Your first sacrifice is not to call him. Your first sacrifice is the labor to culture the atmosphere that makes his presence conducive. But the hardest dimension of working with the Holy Spirit, the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere, simulating heaven in your environment to allow the Holy Spirit comfortable. He says, now arise, O God. Solomon was speaking. He says, come to your resting place. Not come to a house I have built. 
I, I have simulated heaven within a physical structure. Find comfort in it. You can turn your house into a habitation conducive for the Holy Spirit. You can turn your prayer altar, you can turn your bathroom, you can turn anywhere to a place of real fellowship. The presence of God is atmosphere dependent. Number two, you want to walk with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit only relates with people from a standpoint of brokenness and contriteness. You will never truly walk with the Holy Spirit until you are willing to be broken ever broken not once broken ever broken death walks in you daily that life will come out of it to walk in others brokenness so the atmosphere number two brokenness brokenness nothing i know that attracts the spirit of god to the life of a man like brokenness and contriteness number three the third key to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit is obedience to his voice and his instructions. The Holy Spirit is an extension of the will of the Father through the Christ and ignoring and trivializing his instructions will close up the continuity of that lecture, that dealing process. This is the year that God will speak to you and say oh go on a fast three days drop a sacrifice do this the grace to hear his voice and to be prompt in obeying it intimacy with the holy spirit so dominion is not just an impartation you will need to open up yourself to the ordinances of priesthood you will need to labor in the spirit to access light light enough to shine out any darkness Number three, you must trust God to be productive. Productive. Command results all wise. And then number four, the ministry of the Holy Spirit that brings power. Truly, let me tell you, God desires like never before to empower the saints. Never before. The things that we are seeing are only bits and pieces. They are only tests. There are higher dimensions of real graces that are coming. These graces are not for churches. These graces are not for cities. These graces are transgenerational. But God is beckoning on men and women who will stay to know him enough. That his presence will be more than gold. His presence will be more than reputation. His presence will be more than career. It takes time to know God. There is no knowing God in a nutshell. It does not happen. You will have to labor and stay. One course in the school of the spirit can take two months. The next course can take six months. You must stay till he's done. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. And for us as a family of faith, as a global family of faith, it's important for us to heed to these instructions. Because these are instructions that are scriptural and are a reflection of the voice of God. That means that you return and begin to fan your prayer altar to flames. Lord, grant me the grace to pray. I conquer spiritual laziness. No excuses. I pray in season and out of season. Not just give me prayer. Oh God, do this. No, no, no. The kind of prayer that transforms. The kind of prayer that molds you into a newer and superior your version of yourself if your prayer is petition driven you are not doing much in the spirit and then light light will require the labor of study the spirit of revelation works when there is an atmosphere of meditation and contemplation proverbs 18 1 true desire a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. The spirit of wisdom does not come to busy people. You must be able to isolate yourself. Lord, open my eyes. Show me what the ancients saw. Shakaparo skata. And you are searching. And you are searching. You are sleepy, but you are searching. And then light comes from heaven. A chapter is opened. And you will see something you have always looked at, but never seen. 
you stand and run in the strength of that light and you will watch darkness move productivity will require learning learning you must be willing to upgrade your mind you must be willing to upgrade your intelligence upgrade your understanding this is the year to not be embarrassed about your ignorance when you find an area of ignorance do not be embarrassed stay and insist till it leaves hallelujah i'm going to give us a few books i had a revelation and i saw four books and the lord said read it and ask the people to read it i asked jordan to get it you can get it from him four books that contain very prophetic roadmaps into the season that we are entering as a church for the next 10 years number one the final quest rick joiner please write it down number two the call rick joiner write it down number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles munro please write it down and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm mary catherine baxter these four books i saw them in the spirit number one the final quest please i also speak to our global family do well to get it number one the final quest rick joiner j-o-y-n-e-r rick joiner two the call the same person very prophetic classic is a road map to guide the church into the seasons that we're entering number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles monroe late rediscovering the kingdom one of the most concise books i know that introduces the kingdom in an intelligent way and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm the spirit realm there's divine revelation of heaven mary baxter there's divine revelation of hell but there's divine revelation of angels but divine revelation of the spirit a rare book not many people have it but I, i'm sure that we should be able to get it please write these four books and by the grace of god we will walk along these materials um very intricately as the days praise the lord now please i like these are instructions that are unique to our global family and it's important for us to listen every year we bring forth instructions that help us and to give us a direction of where we are going as a ministry um let me start by truly appreciating the entire koinonia family you will never imagine how far god has taken this ministry and taken what we represent across the earth it is no exaggeration when i say we're a global family god has done great things he's given us a global reach he's given us global honor and we truly truly thank him for that and i appreciate yes go ahead please go ahead i appreciate all across nations regions that have contributed uh in making this happen taking our teachings you know um yesterday i was in a meeting and someone just reached out to me with a seed from saudi arabia and said someone sent me to give you this i said thank you for changing my life and changing the believers there. I said, can you imagine that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. That means that he supplies the intelligence and the wisdom per season. The way that the Lord works with me is that he does not always speak but his word comes um there are people that god works with them in different ways god's word always comes in seasons and when the word comes it shifts us to dimensions in life and in ministry praise the lord now um at at 
at a at a workforce level during our retreat by god's grace we'll have the opportunity to just deal with some of these things but this year by the grace of god god is granting us the grace still part of the dominion mandate and he's expanding our reach across the globe by the spirit of the living god praise the lord um the lord is expanding us we're looking at um building teams across six regions and and i'm happy i'm happy that that our global family is listening by the grace of god these are instructions that have come from god um of course we'll continue what we are doing here but by god's grace we're building teams so that we can host major meetings in us in uk and canada it's going to be once every year beginning from this year praise the lord and we're also going to strengthen our African reach by the grace of God. A minimum of three nations is granting us the grace. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're kickstarting with South Africa and Ghana. To those in South Africa and Ghana, God is speaking to us. Praise the Lord. Um, now, let me talk a bit about the school of ministry. Please, we're still suspending it for now, and, and it's a very serious reason why we're doing that. Um, you cannot believe the demand. In a particular nation, there are 50 people, 50, a group of 50 people willing to come into the country for the school of ministry. Uh, and the demand that is in various places to establish centers across, but um, we're walking by the Spirit. Amen. It's easy to think it's expansion, but when you go on your own, you fail. And, and let, let me say this, we are not ashamed to grow. We are not ashamed to metamorphose gradually. Sometimes you have to be careful as you grow because people can put pressure on you. And um, if I follow the pressure that people are putting on me, I think we'll establish a branch, a school of ministry everywhere in every state. And then you find out that God will only be in the ones that are consistent with his program. Praise the Lord. And so, um, we're still hanging on. We have, to, we have to be very fair on the people. And then we're consulting and coming up with the wisdom strategy on what to do. Now, the third instruction, please listen. This is very, very important. The third instruction is, uh, this is concerning our international guests. We have an average of at least five to 20 international guests that come in every week. Um, and it's been a concern that we're not able to see them, we're not able to talk, um, do the things we're doing. So by God's grace, um, and then also for security reasons, by the grace of God, um, we continue to develop our security outfit, but as we're growing, um, the DSS and the military will continue to demand that we upgrade our security infrastructure to be able to host the kinds of people that we're having and receiving. Um, so because of that and all of that, by God's grace, uh, we're going to start holding a special time with all our international guests in Abuja. It's going to be once every month. It will not be in Zaria, it will be in Abuja. Hallelujah. Yes. So it's going to be a special time where I will be meet with the guest myself who we'll have the time to talk, teaching sessions, and then I can counsel and pray, and then they can take their flights and go. It will save the rigor. Uh, you can always come if you want the Koinonia experience. We're always open, but for the specialized sessions, and it will be based on registration. It's free, free, not paying anything, but to be able to coordinate the people in teams. Already we have... As several people were building teams across these regions so that we'll be able to host them. I think you should be happy for this. Praise the Lord. So all our guests, I know that we have some of them here today. Um, I, I came in from Lagos this morning and I was surprised to meet someone who was on his way to Zaria. I'm sure he's somewhere here. He came in from Ghana. I don't know if he's a pastor or he's a leader, someone also from Ghana. Okay, I think he's outside. Praise God. And so to that effect, we will, every week we'll continue to announce, this is just to open us up. There are a few that will come at a leadership level. 
But God is really helping us to build structures. He's moving us. And we thank God for what he's doing. It's truly a year of dominion. And we'll see the power and the glory of God uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, for your life, you must insist. Please write out right now, just prophetically, the various areas of your life where you seek to see the power of God manifest this year. We're going to pray. I wanted us to finish on time so that we can... Um, I actually came in from a conference through a meeting and I'm here. Tomorrow I'm back, so we're just trying to gain time very quickly. Please write it down prophetically. This and that and that is the area of my life that I seek to see the power of God manifest. My finances, my marriage, my spiritual life. Please write it down. Write it believing. You're not just obeying a man, you're obeying God. I want to see ministry step into another dimension this year. I want to see the hand of God upon my life in mighty ways. I want to see restoration in my life this year. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Shalabarusi atakata. You are. The covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Yahweh. The covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Yahweh. The covenant keeping God. Have you written it? We're going to pray shortly on it. But just one more project nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20 by god's grace we're going to start building our facility with immediate effect and um, yes we build our zaria facility god has shown us grace he's shown us mercy and then answered i them and said unto them the god of heaven he will prosper us Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we will arise and build. Praise the Lord. And so please pray every day. Pray, speak over the structure. Lord, we declare you are giving us a place that will be a habitation of your glory. And... Um, Truly, God has been faithful. He's granted us great opportunities. More of this will come. I'm talking to our global family, so I may not go into all of the details. But just for you to know what God is already doing. is a year of dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to pray? Lay your hands on what you just wrote while you are seated. And I'd like you to give it life. Give it life through the power of prophecy. Give it life in the name of Jesus. Please believe this is a year to believe. Childlike faith, childlike conviction. Shila parus kalabarunda jele pratizikata. Embratos kabaruja de gede balada balada kotos. Pranda salabaratosiata. Shebaratu sekete baladaba. Lay your hands and speak upon it. In the name of Jesus, I give you life. In this year of dominion, arise, arise. You will not remain as letters. I speak life to you. In the name of Jesus, outside make sure you are praying. Inside make sure you are praying. Hebarato shalapas kedabada. Embreketeli barato shiata. Rakata parude sheli parato shiada balaraba. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. You are brooding. 
your days I will walk a walk in your days I will walk a wonder in your days see listen to me my brothers and my sisters this is the season to be believers to believe God Lord I believe you are a wonder walking God and you are coming up to me with speed you are shifting me to another dimension lift your voice and declare Lord I believe my faith is alive I believe you I believe you I plunge into prophecy I plunge into prophecy I plunge into prophecy is someone pray supernatural manifestations of your word in my life wonder walking dimensions of your grace wonder walking dimensions of your hand I receive a fresh baptism of the grace for prayer, the spirit of priesthood, the ability to stand upon my watch. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray inside, pray outside, pray online. In the name of Jesus. You are praying. The grace to pray. The grace to be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lay your hands on your eyes and say eyes open. Open to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open to the revelations of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. That God is able to wash my eyes with eyes salve that I may see, that I may see, that I may see. Someone is praying, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Open my eyes to the mysteries of dominion. Open my eyes to the mysteries of speed. Open my eyes. Show me the secrets of the kingdom. Show me the wonder-working power of your word. Are you praying? Open my eyes, oh God. Light, 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 illumination, illumination.
number three, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head. Command your mind to open. Open up to creativity. Open up to excellence at a global scale. At a global scale. At a global scale. Open up to a higher dimension of dominion. Results by the Spirit of God. Lift your voice and pray. Shela baratos komparata, makaplato shoto baliata. But there is a spirit in man, at the inspiration of the Almighty. Make a man of understanding. Speak to your mind. Command it to open up. Command it to open up. Open up to creativity. Witty inventions. Hallelujah. You're going to cry for a deeper dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please listen. The Holy Spirit is not an option to the believer. The Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals. The Holy Spirit is God's advantage to us. I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When ye not it he the spirit of truth is come listen he is the only one who truly brings beauty and glory out of our lives outside of him we are not worth much but when the holy spirit invests himself upon your life he will turn you into a wonder did the bible not say until the spirit be poured upon us from on high isaiah 32 and verse 15 then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then a fruitful vine be counted for a forest i like you to pray and say holy spirit may my life and my environment be conducive for fellowship with you in this season intentional fellowship i call for my environment intentionally someone is praying don't invite him just for ministry don't invite him just for success. Invite him for life. I need you as a matter of life and death. Shalabarada bagato shabrande gani manaramos. Shalabarada la brande gade barakato shalikata. about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can wake you up in the night while you are sleeping. My son, wake up. I want to show you the mysteries of your destiny. And if you allow slumber, sleep is a blessing, but slumber is a cause. God does not give slumber. He giveth his beloved sleep. Are we together? Walking with the Holy Spirit requires sensitivity. There are times you are on the road and you can just say, don't enter that car. Stand. Not because the car will have an accident. I want to show you something. Walking with the Holy Ghost requires childlike flexibility. When you become too organized, you will never know him. You will need a measure of, of um, that childlike attitude. The Holy Spirit can ask you to sit down quietly in the place of prayer and just play worship. And for the next 30 minutes, you are like a madman. Do you have the flexibility to allow his ministry manifest? 
Hallelujah. Many times we do not experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we are too conscious of ourselves. Our reputation, I am this, I am that. And sometimes we want him to fit into the mold of our religion. And because of his love, he will make do with the allowance given him. But there can be more. This is a year where it doesn't mean that you just do stupid things in the name of the Holy Spirit. No, but that you will require flexibility. Flexibility. You can be walking and the Holy Spirit will tell you, go to that market woman selling corn and tell her, Mama, pray for me. It doesn't make sense. It may look stupid. You may look too dignified. But if you can submit to the foolishness of spiritual things, that can be the impartation that shifts you to another dimension. Hallelujah. The wind bloweth where it listeth. John 3 and verse 8. You cannot tell where it's going or where it comes. So is one who is led of the spirit. The character of the spirit is like the wind. Sometimes it looks haphazard, but it's achieving what it's achieving. And you will need to sustain that flexibility. We are going to pray for the grace for influence. What is influence? The ability to compel people to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence. It's one of God's major kingdom advanced strategy. It takes evangelism and influence for the manifestation, the continuity of God's kingdom advanced program to happen. Hallelujah. There is a grace for influence that can come upon people corporately and they will say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. They will tell themselves, let us go. That grace, when it comes upon you, comes upon your business, comes upon the works of your hands, it will transform you. You will become a model. You will become a wonder even to yourself. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lord, turn me into an influence for the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory. Not to build an empire for myself. But so that as men look at me, I can point them to Jesus. As they look at your life, you can point them to Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. give us a few prayer points let's pray a few more and then we're done tonight I want us to corporately cry for this grace for favor please listen please listen please find a way of believing that your life will never make substantial progress until the favor of God is upon your head. The wonder of God's favor upon a man, upon an organization, upon a business is a mystery that very few people have understood. Believe me. The fortitude to become the delight of people where no amount of investment channeled towards you is perceived as a waste because you have become Dula, you have become Hepzibah. We're going to pray. Listen, you can tell within a moment that this life is operating just based on hard work and strive and hustling 
but you can tell when the favor of God picks you the difference is climbing a ladder and entering a lift the energy of the lift is what picks you I know what the favor of God can do I know what the hand of God the favor of God please the next one or two minutes find a way of praying from your heart look upon us with favor this year look upon my family with your favor this is the year of the favor of the lord this is the year the favor of the lord this is the year please pray shapakatos kabarata legabarun satash kabarato segetesh favor upon my head favor upon my destiny favor upon my life my organization my ministry favor prophet favor prophet in endless favor with God and favor with men and 35 let me show you what favor can do job 38 canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee next verse can thou send lightning like a messenger that they may go and say to thee here we are you can call lightning to come and it comes you can speak to the cloud and abundance will meet you where you are there are dimensions of favor you must pray the grace to command resources the bible says strong men retain wealth the grace to command the loyalty of nations not men not cities territories lift your voice and pray release upon me oh god that grace release upon me oh god that grace the grace that speaks to the clouds to release abundance. The grace that sends the lightnings. And they say, here we are. At the back of God. Grace to call animate objects, inanimate objects. 
Let's take one last prayer. Now listen. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have built houses, let it not be that when you are increased in cattle, let it not be that when you have all these things, you will say, my power. Yeshua HaMashiach there is something in scripture called the deceitfulness of riches that means wealth can be like a preacher it can preach a sermon to you and redirect your passion redirect your loyalty you are going to pray and say lord in advance i surrender my achievements in advance i surrender the exploits in advance i surrender the name the fame the increase it is for your glory and it remains for your glory as you glorify the sun the sun will bring you glory lift your voice and vow that vow before God. <laughs> Lift your voice and pray as you increase in ministry. I vow that you will be glorified as you increase me in business. I vow that the nations will know you are the doer as you multiply your grace, your wisdom, your power. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The applauds of men can be deceptive. They clap for you because you are the one they see. But you must be wise enough and bold enough to let them know that there is one who is mightier than I. There is one who is the basis, the backbone of my life. He is not just your support system. He is the basis for everything that comes. Listen, God in this season is ready to stretch his arms unrestrained to those who are not ashamed to tell the nations, if it means to stop clapping for me so you can have the time to clap for him, let it be. By the time you are obsessed with the applauds of men, by the time you are obsessed with a good name, by the time you are obsessed with the mundanity of achievement in a way and manner that it becomes difficult to let Christ be seen directly. Don't say God knows. Men must know that he is the doer. That's where he is glorified. When men do not know he is the doer, you have robbed the testimony that brings God glory. You must be intentional. Create all kinds of strategies to force men to see God when they see you. They will not see him through you ordinarily. You have to find a way of manipulating your image to reflect Christ. Listen. I told you, you've heard me say it many times, that many years ago God spoke to me and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. He didn't lie. This year from January till December, you must perpetually cry every day. And say, Lord, my desire is to be a mirror. That when they look at me, they must think about you. If they look at me and think about me, something is wrong. They should look at me and strangely and mysteriously begin to think about you. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. Apostle, look at this wonderful thing through your life. And then you tell them, I appreciate it. But let the glory go to him. And you are not cheerful. Listen. If giving God the glory does not embarrass you. Get ready for surprises. God will do things in your life. That will cause you to stand in awe. Because of our various backgrounds. And because of many times our upbringing and our experiences. There is usually an obsession. To want to be the faces around achievements. I want to. I want everybody to know this came from me. 
and, and there is a healthy dimension to that but we must be very careful the people that God wants to use in these days are people who are not afraid to hide their face so that you will be seen can you sacrifice to veil yourself so that you will have no face and the only face that comes upon your veil is the face of his majesty that when men see you by what power and might do you rot this by what grace do you move in this dimension and then you hide your face oh i need to know the face behind it no it's not as important as the god behind the face the god behind the face should be the end product not the face hallelujah listen it looks like it's just a simple charge but it's a very serious issue to god if there's one thing i know about god is his obsession to see that anything that comes from him to you returns glory to him and it is difficult because we can forget hallelujah yes wow you did this wow you organized this meeting wow look this unprecedented dimension of exploits and sometimes you just enjoy the moment and you feel you'll be cheated if you invite god into that moment and you can almost say god wait let me savor the moment when i'm done whatever is left i can call you and he stands because he gave you a will when your life becomes a reflection of his majesty when everything about you becomes an inspiration for people not just to follow you but to follow him they only follow you because you too you are your way to meeting him please this year make up your mind money will not possess my mind power will not possess my mind achievements will not possess my mind i remain contrite and broken and humble while they celebrate it enjoy it but don't keep quiet that is the time to say ladies and gentlemen i have something to tell you you have celebrated me but i am absolutely nothing without you the god who represents my possibilities and then god is glorified and he's motivated to continue to open greater doors many people have short-circuited the continuity of the lifting of god in their lives because they got to a point where it now became shameful to tell the nations without him i am small i am nothing john got it right that i may decrease so that he will increase it's not self-condemnation my brothers and my sisters it does not rob the fact that you are one with him when the great go on their knees god rises on his throne and he can stand and say who is this defying your achievements defying your accolades defying the applause to let men see me and he will swear a vow with his integrity that as far as you are concerned you will continue to rise for as long as the sun remains in the sky there are covenants that God makes with men. Listen very carefully. Please listen to my last message last year. There are covenants that God makes with men that are not old covenant, new covenant. They are personal covenants that brand his relationship with them by reason of the way they have chosen to walk with him. There are people God has vowed a vow that even if the nations even if the earth stops producing they will never beg it's a covenant it's not an impartation it's a covenant there are people god has vowed a vow with his jealousy that for as long as the earth remains they will continue to prosper and increase there are people god has vowed a vow that they will live longer and they will fulfill their days listen it's time to come out of the general relationship with God this year. Move so far with God that he has to look for a name to define your relationship. It no longer just becomes everyone come to God. He says, no, I isolate you. Your sacrifice is worthy of note. Your commitment is worthy of note. Your death, your brokenness, your contriteness, your insistence to see me glorify. The pursuit of friendship with me 
necessitates that I define my relationship with you. And suddenly he will call you a name that only you can be called. And that becomes the name, the title of his jealousy upon your life. And he will protect it with his might. Please, the song of surrender must be in your ears. Don't, don't mind all this nonsense you hear people say around and say, oh, no, 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 no. A surrendered life is not a weak life. I've taught you that weakness is one of the most powerful weapons in the realm of the spirit. Weakness is greater than strength. So when you are weak, you are strong. Lord, who am I to do this great thing? If you do not help me, can I ever deceive myself that I can be helped? And you are attracting his strength. Lord, this project that is before me now, do I have the wisdom in my power? I lean not on my own understanding and he's coming. Lord, my academics this year, if you don't arise, will it not look like last year? I surrender everything to you. Hallelujah. Please, let's hold hands all over. We're rounding up. This is going to be a very spectacular year. It truly is going to be a year where in spite of the onslaught of darkness, territorially speaking, and over the regions of the north and so, and so forth, God himself will grant the saints grace to prevail. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I don't just come out and speak nonsense. But we are going to pray. I saw an onslaught of darkness across the north. A massive multiplication of kidnapping. Strategic kidnapping. Where they just pick people like chickens. And this one is not just asking for ransom again. It's just destroying people to be able to inflict fear, to discourage the saints, and so on and so forth. And if we do not pray, especially because of the regions that we're in, are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Do not say like Esther when Mordecai was beckoning on her to speak to the king concerning the threat of her man. She was comfortable for the moment in the palace and Mordecai sent a message and said, look, young lady, they may destroy us who are outside the gate, but be sure they will come for you too. So don't wait on the day they kidnap your son or your daughter or your wife or your husband or your pastor or a leader. We can stand as a global family of faith and lift up our voice and say, Lord, first we declare a shield and a covering over everyone connected to this family and then we extend it to the body of Christ and especially the body of Christ across this region. We silence wars and rumors of wars. We silence it within our borders. This is not to scare you. But there's no point lying to you. I saw this. I have prayed it and I've been praying it on my own. But it's important that the saints pray. Praise the Lord. It's important. I saw a list of specific people that were being hunted for to be picked. And we must pray. Our city is our business. I told you when you are born again, you are saved. But when your territory is secured, you are safe. Praise the Lord. We have to pray. Especially because we have people flocking in every week. This is part of the reasons why we are also making adjustments on our programs with visitors. Because the horse is prepared for battle, even though safety is of the Lord. There is a mandate upon us to communicate responsibility, especially in this season. But we are going to pray nothing missing nothing broken the covenant of peace lift your voice and pray and the god of peace shall give you peace always 
by all means and the lord of peace shall give you peace always by all means and the lord of peace shall give us peace always by all means we fortify our spiritual borders in the name of jesus we speak over zaria we state we speak over joss we speak over Kano. we speak over maturi we speak over yola in the name of jesus we speak over the northeast we speak over the north central we speak over the entire nation in the name of jesus we command peace we declare peace we establish peace we are blessed in our going out blessed in our coming in in the name of jesus the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please pray it's a sacrifice this is priesthood it's a spiritual responsibility thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday please hold your hands together but thou o lord are the shield for me my glory, you lift her up of my head. points while we are holding our hands we are going to pray over every expansion of the ministry this year and all the projects to the region of the earth here in Nigeria across Africa, UK US, Canada lift your voice, Lord we are taking the fire, we are taking the dimension of the spirit committed to us by the spirit by the spirit Pray for all our teams in these regions. Are you praying? Lift your voice and pray by the Spirit. The Lord gave the word. Great is the company of them that published it. Thank you for access to these regions. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit. Thank you for signs and wonders. The establishment of the Lordship of the Christ. Thank you for the dimension of your grace committed to us that we are taking to the nations. As can now give the nations to you, O oh God. That's the cry of my heart. And shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on high. As the Lord, we wait on. 
on you. For fire, Lord, we wait on you. For fire, I wait on you for fire. I wait on you for fire. Go ahead and sing in the spirit, make melodies. Worship. Go ahead, is our year of the rain. And a wide-eyed evangelist called William Seymour came under the influence of this mighty presence. And you led the Pentecostal movement. You came upon women like Catherine Coleman, Amphi Sempo McFarson, Maria Woodward Eater, and they shook their generations to a steel. You came upon Alexander Dewey and a frail cobbler called Smith Wigglesworth. You came upon Madame Gunion. The spirit of the age to come. We invoke that spirit in this season of the rain. Set us ablaze. Let the rain pour. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit. Let there be an outpouring of miracles and signs and wonders. It shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Upon the maids, I will also pour out my spirit. I will show forth wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth. Blood, fire, and smoke. 
This is that, oh God, that Joel prophesied about. We are in that season of the rain. Let there be an outpouring, oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Open up the fountains of the deep and cause the rain to come upon your people. We are in that season. Ask ye for the rain in the time of the latter rain. We ask. This is the season of signs and wonders. The season of the manifestation of suns. The season of miracles. The season of the emergence of ambassadors. Envoys of his majesty. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. Champions, apostles, and prophets, men of fire. Oh, let that army arise. Let that army arise. A mighty army. The fire divorced before them. Behind them, a desolate wilderness. They shall leap upon walls. They shall run like chariots. Men who fear no evil. The fire will not burn them, but they will consume everything before them. Therefore we blow the trumpet in Zion, and we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. We declare that this is that season, this is that time, this is that moment in prophecy. We are the generation that seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, arise, so oh mighty man and empower your army for this season
Give me a visitation tonight. It's our year of the rain. My goodness. Give me a visitation. You will catch fire. This is the year you will catch fire. It's a rain that brings fire. It's a rain that makes you an inferno. Pray and say, Lord, I make a demand. I ask for the rain. Distracted tonight. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I am absolutely convinced. Hear me. That every one of us here represents a sphere of influence. Every one of us here represents a jurisdiction of dominion. And so this is a summit. It's, it's a convergence of kings. It's a convergence of ambassadors. So as you travel, you travel for your sphere of influence. As you pray, you pray for they that are tied to your grace. Don't see yourself as a single entity. For when they looked at the womb of Rebecca, they saw that they were two nations. Not just twins, two nations. We each represent territories, dimensions of spiritual operation that the nations will benefit from. And so when you cry, you cry on behalf of eternity. When you travel, you travel on behalf of a family, on behalf of a community. Lord, we love you. We love you. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Honestly, let me tell you something. We're not ready for what God has in store for us this year. We think we are, but I don't think we're ready. Because... God is going to move this year in most dramatic proportions. You will see ordinary men turn into things that will make you wonder. And this is not some spiritual things physically. You will see men that will walk like gods in this city, across this nation. 
All God is asking is, do you believe? Do you believe? He said, blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that have been spoken. Unto her. Lord, we believe. Let the rain fall without restriction. We empty ourselves and we empty our vessels. Hallelujah. We ask you to help us tonight. Spirit of the living God, we submit to you. Unveil the mysteries of the kingdom. Teach us truths that are older than us. Teach us what made the ancient powerful. Open us up to ancient vistas in the spirit. Show us realities that predate our dispensation. Grant us access to abilities and dimensions in the spirit. Show us the ancient path. Oh, that we will step into the Sabbath. Grant us grace. For there is a longing in our spirit. There is a longing upon our generation. A fresh dimension of the reality of the spirit. And we trust you to bring us into this reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. You're welcome. Just sit quietly. Pick up your writing materials. There is a lot to do tonight. Please no, let no seats be vacant. There are so many people. If we can get some of the people to occupy the seats. Some of them are the extreme overflows. If they can come and at least stand inside. There are people under the anointing ushers. I know that you... It's a season of the rain. We will step into realities this year. We will step into strange dimensions of grace. And the Lord will grant it so. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will step into levels of realities that will change your physical form. Your physical form that will alter you. When Moses stood in the glory, he did not know that he was being changed. After 40 days, he stepped out and his skin, his flesh, his physical flesh. It's, it's not just about using cream and all of that. There is a level of glory. I'm telling you, I want you to believe this. God is not playing games with us. If we mean business with him, he says, who has believed our report? Who has believed? You will see mountains melt as if they never existed. That's what happens when the glory of the Lord comes. You will see God turn around situations. He said, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I want every meeting that we come for all through this year, you must be very intentional about it. You must be very definite about it hallelujah you can greet and play around after the service but the moment you step into this building before the meeting starts i want you to know that you are standing upon mount zion and anything just anything can happen hallelujah that's what god wants to do let it cover all the earth Oh, that's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. That's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the rain of His Spirit cover us. Let it cover all. I wrote this song years ago from my spirit. 
Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. The reality of spiritual laws. What we'll be learning tonight will be so powerful. So powerful. My goal for us this year is that we will become so powerful men and women of extreme spiritual power and it will happen as we are shown the keys of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom listen let me tell you something for years for years there has been a cry in my spirit somehow there is a testimony in my spirit that our generation has lost touch with ancient realities. You hear me use that word again and again. People move forward, but something in my spirit keeps drawing me back. And it says, if you can go back enough, you will find something we lost. Hallelujah. I've been intrigued every time I read things in scripture and it talks about ancient things. There is something that the ancient knew. It's not supposed to be so difficult. We have lost touch with the dimension of reality. Carnality, flesh, intercourse with Babylon, cut short a flow of spiritual reality. And the Lord told me something last year. He said, mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. That means every dimension of grace that has ever been displaced in the earth, they are archived in certain dimensions here in the earth realm. And if we can trust the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will navigate us to those parts. And we will collide with these ancient mantles. And we will do strange things upon the surface of this earth. You believe that? And this is our journey. Show us great things, oh God. The reality of spiritual laws. Aside from revealing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ, one of the cardinal areas of my call is to teach the body of Christ the principles of the kingdom. To unveil to the body of Christ that dominion is a resultant effect of the knowledge and the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden truth that requires the agency of the spirit or another spirit that is not of this realm to open an individual to the reality it's called a mystery mysteries the occultic realm operate on the strength of mysteries coded operations that are shrouded in mysteries science cannot explain it it takes your fraternity with another spirit to open you up to those dimensions and so he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there is the word a man and a man knowing his wife it has been given to you to come into a union with the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah if we ever will attain to that stature of spiritual authority where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom then i want you to know that it will never just be by impartation it will never just be by stories it will stand upon the strength of something that we know what did job know that turned his financial predicament in a moment 
The Bible did not tell us what business he did. The Bible just said Job prayed for his friends. Mysteriously, people started coming from everywhere. Brothers and sisters, are there portals we have lost in the spirit? Have we not lost touch with certain dimensions of spiritual reality? Hallelujah. The prophet said, bring me a mystery. Who taught him? Who lectured him? How did he know? He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. My heart is indicting a good matter. He said, yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who taught this man? Who taught the psalmist that praise was a garment that a man can wear? He called it a garment. Not an attitude of praise. A garment of praise. Every time they praise God in the place of war, I noticed they use a coded language. All they said was, for he is good and his mercy endures. It was not any kind of praise. There was a type. It was like a spiritual code. Every time they began to say, for he is good and his mercy endures, he rose as a man of war. Meaning not every word invokes every dimension. There is a kind of language that makes God to operate in a certain way. Are you learning something? Help us, oh God. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Part of my resolutions this year is that I will open us up to deep things. Some of us will be afraid of some of the things we'll be learning. I've been praying and saying, Lord, prepare your people. Because it will rattle the eye the foundation of what you know to be Christianity and you will know that many preachers have lied to us hallelujah so let's prepare our hearts because this thing is not the exclusive reserve of one man it has nothing to do with the posting of a preacher let me tell you something the hallmark of an apostolic ministry I will keep saying it till we understand. It's not just miracles and signs and wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of that, right? But the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry is the ability to receive the revelation that is meant for a dispensation. To understand it and communicate it accurately to the people of God. Because the apostolic ministry is dispensational. Are you following me now? And the knowledge of God is also dispensational. Meaning there is a curriculum, there is a scope of understanding that God expects a dispensation to know. Are you following me now? So that what we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Every dispensation coming with a revelation of God. And adding that revelation to another dispensation. Are you following me now? And that means that our dispensation has certain dimensions of God that we must know and we must touch. But it takes the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Not just to do signs and wonders and to lay hands and heal the sick. That is important. But to be able to sustain a posture in the spirit such that we can receive these spiritual realities, understand them and interpret them to God's people. And then they will be able to walk in this path and you will see certain possibilities in our lives. Hallelujah. And this is what we aim to do in this place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The reality of spiritual laws. Science has taught us that there are laws that govern this earth realm. They teach us in physics and, and chemistry and other aspects of science that there are laws and scientists have been able to come into the recognition of certain physical laws and they have been able to account for the explanation of certain tragedies that have happened to men hallelujah over time scientists began to inquire as to why men will encounter certain inexplainable tragedies and they later discovered that there were laws that were being violated unconsciously. That you do not recognize that there is a law does not mean it's not there. 
Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. If a child does not know there is gravity and he jumps on a, a, an altitude like this, the child will fall. Gravity will not say, I excuse you. Is that true? There are many other laws. Now, I want you to know that the same way spiritual laws govern this physical, physical law, sorry, govern this realm. There are spiritual laws that govern the operation of the spirit. Hallelujah. You are able to walk very well when you can master the laws. Physically. None of us will find ourselves walking against gravity, for instance. And if by any means you are to walk against gravity, you know what to do to be able to remedy the, the imbalance that you are creating. And so you do not find yourself fighting the laws of nature. Gravity, for instance. Friction, for instance. All of these are laws. I want you to know that there are spiritual laws. Say spiritual laws. Many people have been able to find these laws and walk with these principles. And they have been able to do mind-bogging things in the earth realm. And as we explore this reality, my goal tonight is not so much to share what the laws are as it is to bring us into a recognition that as scattered as spiritual things look, as scattered as the earth is, there is a rhythm. Are you getting my point? There is an exact synergy. There is a sequence. There is an equation of the happening of things. They are not as haphazard as we think. There is a level of order and accuracy. God designed the earth. It is our inaccurate understanding or total ignorance to his principles that has resulted to certain levels of setbacks and limitations in our lives. And in this year of the rain, God wants to open us up to a recognition of certain principles. And you will find out that what has grounded you for years, you will walk cheaply. You will now find out that the, the enemy that many of us has been, have been talking about, they are not necessarily the demons out there. Our ignorance, our lack of understanding the laws of God. Say amen. The key to kingdom dominion, please write this down. The key to dominion, the key to influence, the key to power, the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom. I'll repeat it again. Please make sure you are writing something or at least jotting something on your notepad or so on, on the phone or so. The key to kingdom dominion, the key to influence, influence is the capacity to alter people's mindsets, the key to power, the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom there are ancient laws encapsulated in this bible there are laws that are older than us there are laws that predate our dispensation they have been responsible for the rise and the fall of kings they have been responsible for the rise and fall of champions and when we find peace with these laws we will do big things for the king we have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come. With open hearts, oh, let the ancient personalize it. Say, I have come with an open heart. I have come with open hearts, oh, let.
Daniel chapter 19. Let's begin our journey so that we can pray. We have come with all. We have come. Oh, let me Daniel chapter two from verse nineteen to twenty two. The story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream, forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation, and was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets. And Daniel said, Give us time. And the Bible says he asked for wisdom. And in the night, can we read together verse 19? One to read. Then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision then daniel blessed the god of heaven verse 20 blessed be the name of the lord forever and ever for wisdom and might are his 21 he, he changed the times and seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him he said then was the secret revealed <laughs> brothers and sisters secrets can be revealed not everything is known by every christian are you hearing me the Bible says the secret things of the Lord are not just with Christians. They are with them that fear him. And he will reveal his covenants. He will show them his covenants. There are mysteries in our world. There are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit. And it takes men who can press to say, Lord, open my eyes. Show me the secrets. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. Is that true? Kentucky Fried Chicken, one of the great eateries around. Um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed. Is that true? That secret recipe is what makes them unique. Coca-Cola, till today... They have not revealed the exact formula and combination. Great men dwell upon the strength of secrets. In ancient time, it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets. They were known only by the king and his envoys, those we call knights or apostles. They were the highest representatives of the king. They knew where treasures were hidden in castles. They knew secret places of escape in chambers. When, when they came to defeat a nation, they knew how to, to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf. It was an access that was given to them. And so as his ambassadors, God wants to show us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He said, come, let us reason together. I want to show you how I operate the heavens so that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth. If you believe that, say amen. So spiritual laws are real. The spirit realm is a real realm of existence. Just like the physical realm. It is only a lot more superior to this realm. This realm is bounded by many things. There are limitations. For instance, this realm is purely three-dimensional. But in the realm of the spirit, there are many dimensions. A lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions, five. I don't believe that. I believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit. 
Because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I want us to know that the spirit realm is real. The spirit realm is real. And there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm. Every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online, every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time. Whether you recognize it or not, the condition to, to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive. Remember I began the teaching last week showing us the five elements, right? The elements of creation. We drink water. Is that true? We breathe air. Why don't we breathe dust? We breathe air to live. Air that seems to be immaterial. But we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive. So, our biological composition is, is, a, is a, a, an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit. Prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm. Success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm. The anointing, the ability and the agency of the spirit. When a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer and stretch your physical hand, you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls. It tells you that there is something more than what your eyes see. There is an interaction. Is that true? Watch this. I'm speaking to you. There is, no there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart. But what I am saying is passing through your ears. And it has the ability to influence your paradigm. Because they are spirit and life. Hallelujah. So we must, we must rise to this reality. That all we see in our world, brothers and sisters, is not all there is. Praise the Lord. All we see is not all there is. There is more. Say there is more. In this building right now, inside and outside, there are more angels than this crowd gathered here. And many of them are doing many things as I teach right now. Some are imparting graces and all of these things. Right? Working in partnership with the Spirit. And they are not only angels there are also the spirits of just men made perfect testifying like the witnesses that stood with jesus at the mount of transfiguration elijah and moses representing the law and the prophet they are not the only witnesses there are many others enoch for instance right many other people so the Bible says, ye are come unto Mount Zion. And it begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place. Listen, the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual, that the physical manifestation is only a little portion. Hallelujah. Occultists understand this. Politicians understand this. Is that true? I was, I was studying the world religion. I'll give you a few statistics as we progress. Very shocking. I didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world. I thought there were just maybe 100 or 1,000. I will tell you the figure shortly. <laughs> and all these religions have followers. Ardent, committed, die-hard followers. Meaning the spirit of man is searching for something. Searching for a connection with its source. Somehow, mankind knows that until you interact with this, the spirit realm, there is no stability to your person. There is a longing. So we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions. And we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us. There are spiritual laws. The same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws 
and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance that is the same way i can stumble into a spiritual law i do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically are you hearing what i'm saying and then on the other hand i can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical are you following me now so it seems to me like the journey of many christians is 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 a blind dashing into spiritual laws we are not exactly sure sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity and ha has that happened to you for weeks you find out that favor is coming everything is happening and then it's like something happens and it's short there are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass and then other times you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself hallelujah there are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night and everything you see is coming to pass and then certain times what is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit this is what i want to teach you the reality of spiritual lives. even for preachers there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heavens you are just ministering and my goodness scriptures that you you read years ago that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim and other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering i hope i'm not messing up listen if you get what i'm teaching you you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually hallelujah certain people have touched this realm in different forms hallelujah now watch this the fundamental principle i want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching because what i'm going to be saying will rattle many of us hallelujah some of the things that i'm going to be saying will challenge us but i want you to follow me the fundamental principle i want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to god you will see the advantage of this statement as we progress everything created belongs to god secondly all power belongs to god hallelujah all power psalm 62 verse 11 please quickly psalm 62 verse 11 it says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power everybody shout all power all power you went to school what is your understanding of all power meaning if there is any performance that ever occurs any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth to any degree was either a release or a corruption of power that came from god please follow me god has spoken once twice i have heard this that power belongs to god look up please when a magician takes a white handkerchief please follow me tonight and waves it and brings out a dove out of it what happened what happened hallelujah when a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology what exactly is happening listen to me he said once have i spoken twice in other words i emphasize it as a witness that all power belongs to god that means the central force in the realm of the spirit is not astrology it's not the constellation the seat of power in the spirit is God himself just follow me every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call God 
And over time, what has happened is, listen, falling angels. You know, I spoke to you about the pre-Adamite dispensation. We spoke a bit about that, right? Realities that predate Genesis 1. You find that in Job 38, right? The creation, we spoke a bit now, last year, this year, the creation of angels and all of these things, right? Now watch this. Let me show you a few mysteries in the Bible. Have you read in your Bible that stars fought for a woman called Deborah? Question, was she a non-believer? <laughs> Have you heard that thing that stars fought for Deborah? Have you heard people mention statements like, you were born with 10 stars? Eh? Whether you believe it or not, just follow me. I'm not teaching you Scientology. I'm provoking you to be mature. Just listen to me. Are you following me now? Many of us come from different cultural backgrounds where at one point or the other they have brought somebody to your house. Hello, Baba, Mama, whatever. They shall brought somebody to your house. And he was able to do certain things. Whether he used cola or not, whether he used whatever. And he began to unveil certain things. Either reveal the person that stole. Is that true? Stole money or meat or lied. Is that true? And then he began to reveal some things. How many of you have seen people who are not born again? They have never given their life to Christ. Yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge. Is that true? In certain tribes, they call them those whose head has opened. Is that true? People who can see beyond certain things. Listen. God has spoken once. Let it be known to you. That when it comes to the realm of the spirit, there are not many forces. There is one force. Everything revolves around him. His name is God Almighty. Whether we accept to call him God Almighty or not. Are you getting my point now? Hmm. So how come Satan can manipulate power? How come traditional rulers can manipulate power please follow me how come a man can look at this lady and say look um you will not give birth case close he didn't ask her whether she had faith or not he just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught is that true how come people read magical books huh all kinds of books they tell them recite this and the moment they recite it things start happening brothers and sisters am i telling a lie or pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue because if we don't many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft if all power belongs to god then whose power are witches using follow me if all power belongs to god then the religions that can turn there, there, there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water physically he walked upon it huh he walked upon a building sideways and came down no pastor has done that at least i only know one bold pastor who decided is it was prophet daniel the one that lions tore him into pieces in the badan. that's the closest thing that i know but the Bible says, once have I spoken, twice, that all. So, is it that God gave it to these demons? No, think about it. Go to Zaria city and meet somebody and say, I want a husband. What's that thing that they carry? Love portion, wealth portion, all kinds of, of things. They give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him. He becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question by the way to interest you to know that there are four thousand two hundred religions as of today in the world how many four thousand two hundred registered all the 4200 religions where did they get their power from satan does not create anything is that clear do we all agree question 
was God sleeping? Did they steal some of the power without his seeing? What is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces? Some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you. You are trying to call Jesus, they shut your mouth with all your knowing of Jesus. Jesus, and they stand and they laugh. Question, who empowered them? If Satan was created, <laughs> are you prepared for this year of the rain? We are going to talk, we are, we are going as deep as God will help us go. Because we must answer some questions. Let me tell you, when you answer these questions, you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry. Because when you see it, you know that, ah, uh ah, -uh, this is the one plus one. This is what made it happen. And I told you that every time you catch a light, what happens in the spirit? Grace is given to you to walk in that reality. So you can see five people struggling over a demon. Go out, go out, and you will only pass. No prayer. Light. The spirits know what they are seeing. You see that? Because the strength of evil is darkness. The Bible calls them rulers of darkness, not rulers of light. Whenever there is darkness, they are authorized to rule. All religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth, to joy, to happiness, to life, to peace, and to God. Or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance. That's the whole bit behind every world religion. Is that not true? If somebody comes to take you now and says, Mary Ann, I want you to be part of the Confucius religion. You think you will just come? Won't I promise you something? I'll promise you wealth and happiness. I'll promise you that whatever you want, speak certain things and it will happen. Right? If Marianne speaks it and it happens, she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. Shei will first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the wall, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our, our backwardness in technology will make us say, what is all this? Find out how many Africans do. They are not Christians, they are not Muslims, they are not Hindus, right? They are something else. And they have followers. There is an acclaimed personality in this nation. I, I, I told you that I've repented from mentioning names. Acclaimed personality who I think for 48 years or thereabout. I don't know if it was him or, or his brother or somebody who never came out never came out for about 48 years look even if you are sitting down for 48 years power somehow the devil must come upon you he must land upon your life and interact with you sacrifices that men have made now the question is brothers and sisters if god is good and god is great and he does not eschew what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment? Preachers have thought that the power you have, the power Satan has is your power or he collected it. How did he collect it? Collect it back. The question, how did he collect it? You know, we generalize things that we owe people. Demon is working with something that is solid and provable. Hallelujah. You prayed about something. The answer did not come. Your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave thanksgiving in church, but we really know where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. 
and they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth and answer these questions or keep telling lies. There are many people telling lies in church. Many of the miracles people claim to get in church, I am telling you, they got it outside the church. They consulted a lot of powers. There are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people. And they confirm. Is that true? Whether, whether you are a pastor, whatever you believe, keep your westernization. They will go and consult. Even if it means them buying goat, ram, sheep, human being, they will consult. Is that true? What then is this mystery? There are five religions, major religions, out of the 4,200. The first is Hinduism. The second is Buddhism. The third is Islam. The fourth is Christianity. And the fifth is New Age. There's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what these individual sects, if I will call them, believe. There are others who believe like the Hindus, for instance. Hindus believe there is one great God, but he expresses himself in many ways. Meaning there are many ways to approach him. Right? So they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this God. And they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation. Buddhism. Many people think Buddhism worship Buddha. No. They just feel that Buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness, as they call it. And so they model after his life. Same with all the other religions. New Age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness. Under New Age, you are God. It's a, it's a little stealing away from the Bible. All these religions, there's no time. I would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the Bible. That's why they can prove to any Christians. That's why Christians are the most vulnerable. Is that true? They take Bible and show you what supports their belief. And you say, wow, this thing is in the Bible. Meaning God must support it. There comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same God. Have you heard those, those devilish teachings? And so people tell you, don't worry. When you go to the Habalists, you say, look, don't be scared with all this color not I'm doing. It's still the same thing. It's just different ways of invoking the same God. And then he invokes the color not and he says, Psalms 1 verse 3. I say, ah, Psalms, Abba. I know Psalms. Go ahead. Right? To now justify that because Psalms 1 was mentioned, God is in it. Is that true? What deceit. What deceit. All power belongs to God. Now watch this. I want you to know this. The fallen angels. Hallelujah. Those we call the fallen angels. I've taught us but I'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things. The fallen angels. When they came to the earth. Please listen to me. They interacted with men. And part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations don't forget that they were all in heaven right certain laws are god's own laws and they are made to happen how many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow please tell the truth after you sow you go back and say oh god no once you sow it to the earth you go back a man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws so it is god has put spiritual laws are you getting my point now for spiritual laws to work please come i'm establishing something come sir for spiritual laws to work in the spirit a spirit must assist you in activating its operation are you getting the rules for any spiritual law at all to work there must be a spirit entity that will assist you. It is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated. So if I am a magician and I'm doing a lot of abracadabra, for instance, 
there must have been a spirit that was invoked appeased or a demand is placed upon him is that true now let's explain our traditional festivals what happened what is the whole goal of many traditional festivals they first appease certain spirits either with people who must die or sacrifices and when those spirits are appeased the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm let the people know that ah this goat the spirit has, has eaten it although you are seeing a physical goat the priest ends up eating the flesh physically uh, uh, the honorarium the, the, everything goes to the priest but i'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received is that true that's what happens no man by his strength can activate spiritual laws are you getting my point there must be the assistance of a spirit watch this i want to shock you now the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws just follow me the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws the spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities they can guide men to activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that god becomes involved and the glory goes to god are you getting my point that means watch this it is possible that i can use magic power and look at sam and do a miracle a real miracle it happens but it did not happen by the spirit of god but because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true I can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this listen to me you will hold the holy spirit as a matter of life and death are you getting my point now the problem with many men of god is when they started their journey they started with the holy spirit but they allowed their passion to make them leave the holy spirit so when the holy ghost said wait i'm schooling you in this area they said i'm in a hurry i must enter prophecy i must enter this holy ghost you can go and another holy spirit another spirit really not holy another spirit continued the journey are you getting the point and because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the holy spirit so although in them they feel something is wrong there is there is a mixing many men of god in this country around that we call fake are not fake even those who do magic most of what has happened is a perversion are you getting me they went under certain people certain hands were laid in them and certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them and it activated certain possibilities and they started gaining knowledge on certain laws is god helping us or are you afraid of the teaching you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul 
you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over i know you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul for you are being changed his glory is been revealed when the spirit takes over your soul listen when you hear us talk a lot about the holy spirit and emphasize him it is because there are other spirits already and if you do not embrace the spirit of god you will meet with another one eventually the day you need a job you will meet with one hear me look up you never go to a herbalist and return the same way you came did you hear what i said you never impossible every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him if you come to me for help and i'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic you finish and say nice man you think you just left but you did not live alone automatically that's why you will return again someone makes you return the people inside and outside both those who wanted to come or did not come the spirit of the living god drew you is that true when you understand these brothers and sisters you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically you will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation many of us are are very once you see supernatural things you are happy it doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever you are just happy right and right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy young people want to enter prophecy and 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 they want to enter world of knowledge they want to enter dimensions now nothing is wrong with that it's because of the revival that is coming but satan is already preparing a major deception because he has seen it that's one of the reasons why i'm teaching this there is a major arsenal of deception that the devil wants to release to the nigerian church where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring but it's not the outpouring of the holy ghost and you will see men move in charismatic dimensions you will see people do things like angels right almost no limits to their impossibilities and even they themselves will not know that they are being deceived are you seeing why the book of revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived I have prayed for many people in meetings anointed people ministers of the gospel and as i minister to them i may never get to tell them but they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation what they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit acts chapter 16 don't turn there remember a lady who had the spirit of divination is that true did she give people word of knowledge please answer me and the bible says when some businessmen found her they said you are exactly what you are looking for and they started using her you pay money to prophesy you think if the people were not getting results they will come back they were getting results she will say this will happen and it will happen and when paul i like paul so two spirits paul had a word of knowledge her too she had her own word of knowledge two spirits right and paul looks at her and she begins to say these are great men of god you know what she was looking for she was looking for partnership because human beings cannot discern the difference so that she knew that paul was only visiting the city so let's be friends so that when you leave the city they will say ah, ah if paul is not here i am here pastors hear me you must be careful in this day and age the kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with 
there are many of us they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes sir you think you are saving sinners you will enter the midst of devils without knowing and they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it will be a three-day meeting you will be the one to start first you will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders when you finish devils will come and hug you and you will snap together and then the next day people will come and they'll say just like the servant of god ministered yesterday we are continuing and people will catch strange spirit there are meetings people have gone to the moment they left the meeting lost came upon their lives and they started looking for ladies uncontrollably they fell under the anointing they rolled around and prayed in tongues and the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls confusion how can i be moving so much in the anointing right or somebody gets up and just begins to steal the reality of spiritual laws we constantly interact with this law watch this spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative they can change realities in this physical realm are you following my teaching now that is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say sam hold it they say roll it and sam will roll it and sam will bring out a foul how does handkerchief change to a foul right what they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it are you getting my point and what is the goal the goal is to convince you to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them the spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing i hope you know that when jesus was on the earth he was not the only one doing miracles i hope you know remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining that there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere oh, jesus you are the happening man where did this and we are your other people so if it's not you it should be us where are these strangers coming from again and jesus made a very controversial statement he said whoever is not what against us is for us ah. spiritual laws so deborah could look at the stars and say stars i understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work and the bible says the stars fought for deborah with the permission of god joshua my namesake in the bible what happened to him he looked at the sun and said if this sun goes down they are going to kill our people because of that sun stand still right daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed and he said oh king i know what you saw you saw a being an image stand with the head of gold the breastplate of silver and you saw clay mixed with metal at his feet and he began to describe the fall of different empires the christian empire the babylonian empire and down to the new age that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality that's the last empire the feet that is a mixture of clay and iron one side the government is soft on another side the government is hard it's a mystery he saw it described brothers and sisters listen to me the the proof that god is in a thing is not just in the result but the spirit that initiates and sustains that process this is where i'm driving at the proof that a thing is of god the holy ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process otherwise it is fetish it is demonic it is from darkness even if it produces a real result i'm giving you the reason now is producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law 
or a spiritual law and because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm it will produce results watch this every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process are you hearing what i'm saying when julius Baga builds what do they leave they build their their logo is that true if pw builds they leave everything meaning if satan gives a child he will leave his signature right if satan heals the sick he will leave his signature when you know this you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing or many there are many reasons but the major reason is because satan comes to steal kill and to destroy so although he uses spiritual law there must be darkness in his operation so satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem right one miracle that creates another problem and you come to him he gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness when you come as drunkenness is being solved barrenness follows right there is a signature one law being activated and causes another one that's why it is the blessing of the lord that can make rich and the, there will be no sorrow there is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from satan please hear me tonight not every open door is anointed the fact if you force a door in the spirit it will open Jesus Christ there are secular musicians that sing and for those of us who used to listen to their songs or those who listen around us we pass by when you hear their voices you know that this voice is it has a glory that is not physical are you getting me spiritual laws manipulated but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them that's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven but it does something to your spirit man because those laws help satan to continue his agenda in the earth is god speaking to us tonight so number one realize that there are spiritual laws number two realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity number three there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws spirits of the dead all kinds of fallen spirits but god has only one spirit that is permitted authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man and the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living God. Is the Holy Ghost, spirit of the living God. Is the Holy Ghost. Number one, we have not allowed the spirit of God to teach us these operations of the spirit. So that we can align ourselves with these laws of the spirit. I may just touch on one of the laws, maybe two of the laws really we'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws and then we'll just end because i want us to pray hallelujah praise the lord laws of the spirit watch this this guy is playing this did you know that he's activating a law a spiritual law what he's playing is a language your senses don't understand but your spirit understands it that's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it are you hearing what i'm saying the melodies you know why many people are addicted to secular music honestly it's not just that they are bad people it's that those melodies are languages they draw your spirit but because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits. So you hear him playing what he's playing. He's playing the strings. And he's, he's doing something to your spirit man. 
if a heavily sits down and plays, you will keep enjoying and you will fall down, but not under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You will fall down and stand up and something will land on you. Are you getting that now? So it matters what spirit you sit under. It matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate. It matters not just that results are being produced. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit, we who are the sons of light, I want you to know that many people will run to the devil and he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange. If we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women, they will go to Babalawos every day. We can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody. We have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake. Not just because we are going to Habalist, but we have refused to hold on to that which is real. See that? Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive. This becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion. The Holy Spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion. Please let me surprise you and understand me. You can take just this Bible verbatim without the presence of the Holy Spirit, you can still hold, get into error. Are you getting me? You can still hold the Bible blindly and you will still get into error. There are many people who go to Habalis. I counsel a lot of people. And some people come and meet me. And they or their children or wives have gone to Habalis. And they say they go to the Habalis and they see many books. And they see Holy Bible. Holy Bible was produced by a publishing company. Some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again. Is that true? They are just doing business. Zondervan or whatever publishing company. But it is the presence of the spirit of the living God. Meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation. That's why every sect of the Christian faith uses this. But they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits. Genesis 11. That's what happened to Nimrod Kush, the origin of witchcraft. Nimrod Kush, these fallen angels appeared to him. In fact, before Genesis 11, the days of Noah... The Bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth. Is that true? And they started sleeping with the daughters of men. Brothers and sisters, our ladies are smart people. Do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say, um, Marianne, I'm in love with you. Wouldn't you run? If you see a beast with tail, with horn, says, I'm, before he says, I'm in love, you will run away. These beings were not daft. They came and walked like men. I told you angels don't have wings. And there is no record of angels with wings in the Bible. Those who have wings are cherubims. In fact, angels appeared with people. They ate with people in the Bible. Is it not true? Angels ate with people in the Bible. When the angel appeared to Mary, she didn't say, I'm afraid. She wondered what the salutation, not the angel. Meaning they had been seeing them. When the angel appeared to Zechariah and all of these kinds of people, it is the seraphs that cover cartoon films have have created these things based on their interpretation and now we're not criticizing them but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things <laughs> hallelujah are we following now ah i sense the presence of god there are so many spiritual laws i want you to know that if I ask you what are the physical laws, you would name them. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are the, the, our fundamental laws, first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. 
laws of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics. Right? When we do chemistry, qualitative analysis, and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sam sorry hallelujah let's touch on two of these laws can we I read an article there is a powerful series on finance when we are teaching that one we'll share it but let me give you the preview the anchor scripture to that that series is thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over there was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over hallelujah now a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was and i got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual right a manual that dates 2300 years ago written by a greek philosopher that manual they seem they said seem to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone fortunes will begin to come to you i know some of you with all this message i say where is that manual i can ask god for forgiveness where is that manual <laughs> repent this is the year of the rain many of you have suffered it doesn't matter what where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means, you know what this Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do? They are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings. And they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws. They reveal to them that this universe is not just sand. They reveal to them that air is not just air. Water is not just water. And they have excellently archived this principle through centuries. Right? Let me tell you. These were the very principles that kings used. Did you hear that in ancient times king had, kings had scrolls? And certain things were written. In fact, part of the writings were magic formulas that will open certain doors. You see them in some of the films that you watch. All these things were an aberration of spiritual laws. What does that tell you? That means truly all things are available for life and godliness. If we can allow the Holy Spirit to take the word of God and guide us, all things are really possible. Hallelujah. One of the most prominent business law among many business people is what they call the law of attraction. I, I, I don't believe it in that sense. And that law teaches that it is, it's, a, it's an extension of, of Newton's law of universal gravitation. That the earth is a living thing. Right? And it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature. It makes it look like modern nature is supervising our, our, our activities. That's, that's demonic from the of hell the devil will never give credit to god and they have used it and made children brilliant in school they have used those laws how many of you have have have, have seen all these things they spoke about uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this sort i know i'm stretching you tonight some of you are wondering who am i now am i a christian no, <laughs> listen i'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem. You will not find anywhere. The only one you will find is a temple. 
a temple you must greet the priest to resume your work and once you go there they will look at you and when you will not bow they will ask you questions and you say in koinonia I was taught abc and they love they say really you know lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this our christianity because we think the whole world is like zaria when you go out of this place and see the way people hate god you will know you need more to stand is that true that's why god refused you from going abroad because he would have he would have he would have converted two days he would have you would have left god by the time they bamboos your mind and then they tell you okay just read this portion and you read this portion and you go out and people start calling you from nigeria and sending you money so what is going on ah say let me read the other part that i didn't read again you think you won't do it hallelujah and the holy spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity they just preach them because one person had another man of god preach it hallelujah number one my goodness pray in tongues for one minute say lord open my eyes something is about to change in your life now i've had several encounters through the word of god i'm about to share with you i've read it in books over the years but when god began to open me up to it it changed my life forever proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 let's see how far god will help us we have to stop somewhere to pray what you are about to learn must change you i'm telling you you will be so changed you will be surprised many of you will carry the presence of god you will carry the glory of god you will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you everybody read please one two read just the first portion the first clause one to read listen the bible says as a man thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will become so he already is as a man thinketh in his heart so he so he I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life the quality of your environment the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies a direct re reflection of your perceptions about god about life about wealth about whatever it is the bible says as a man thinketh in his heart that means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thoughts earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind selfishness watch this i don't know if it was last week or so that that i said it i think i shared it during the retreat take a security man 
Is that true? Take him to the office, assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings. The last story building belongs to the CEO. Take the security man to that story building. Leave him there for two weeks. That office will start reflecting his mindset. Right? Immediately. Because when the man sits on that chair, his mindset will refuse that reality. First, he will feel he does not qualify for it. And then second, he will be afraid because he will think that after a while, they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove, whether, <laughs> what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. And say, how can you put a big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from Nepal on or, or what, what they call him now? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time he will see a beautiful artwork and he will say, how much will they sell this one, please? He say, 20,000. I say, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no. Package them together. Let's sell it. Buy me a rubber cup, please. I'm, I'm contented. His mindset is already playing out. He will step into the place dirty and won't clean it. Right? He will eat food and leave it there. He will leak that document. He will take any piece of paper and clean water with it, not knowing what the document is. At the end of two weeks, that office has reflected his ideology. That's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire, none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they, are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth, the principles that brought it. You never become wealthy by receiving dash money. I'm telling you this. There are people who receive 100,000 every month, maybe from parents or well-wishers. But the revelation they have about prosperity, about God, about money, drives wealth away from them. Is that true? Are you getting me? There are men of God whose churches, you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the Holy Spirit to bless people. Is that true? They don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing. They don't disturb us with noise. We want order in this church. And because of that, although they are God-fearing, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things, but their ideology. So listen to me. The only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception. Listen to me. I was teaching the leaders and I taught them this. I told them, do you know why some ministries have the best of everything? Have you wondered why? You see certain ministries, the best keyboardists, the best um, computer um, people, the best sound people. Let me tell you why. Because the, the, the mindset of that man, right? will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology. There goes the same birds of the same feathers. Do what? So the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 4 now, right? 4 verse 23 it says, guard your heart. You see that? With all diligence. This is the Bible. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are what the issues the quality of your life is locked up within your mindset i believe god for anything i believe god can take this ministry to any height hallelujah i do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of god that's my mindset right that's why you see members of living faith for instance they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder being a man of rugged faith it's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back and they come to testify do you have the gods to do that kind of thing it's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said you are still my husband you are alive and after three days he comes back to life 
he did not need to necessarily change them he first changed himself listen if you are not changed your words will not carry power your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you that's why see let me tell you if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well they come right now and teach you on prosperity some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep they are communicating their reality if Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality the deposit of the anointing within him are you hearing what i'm saying that's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head and frank edwards for instance can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying brothers and sisters leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be right that means when i become convicted by my ideologies it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you that's why the more successful a man becomes the easier it becomes to influence others because his life now has sufficient testimonies are we getting blessed many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015 hear me change will never come if you are still blaming people you and god in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come if you do not allow the word of god to renew your mindset i promise you you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws that's why whenever god wants to bless a man god convinces you and makes sure you agree with him if you don't agree with him it will never happen in your life for a long time god kept telling abraham i want to change you abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality and god said come out i don't know what to do to come out he says start counting the stars abraham was counting and he was seen he will count and miss god said do it just continue and his mind was acclimatizing and abraham said wow and the bible says finally abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness when the angel appeared to gideon gideon said oh, oh, don't deceive me the angel took time he didn't quarrel gideon because he knew that if gideon did not agree with him nothing will happen and gideon said i need proof let the cloth be wet let the ground be dry he said no problem if that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us go ahead and gideon said now don't be offended let the cloth be dry i i want to convince myself when mary said how shall these things be gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain and she said i believe although i've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man but i believe and he said be it unto me according to your word instantly she got pregnant zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws that's why when he doubted gabriel he said, let's shut the mouth of this man he's going to use the next spiritual law i'm about to teach you to change what we want to do is somebody learning something hear me this is what makes ministry easy i never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual the intellectual and the physical ideologies of the leaders you change a system by changing the leaders are you hearing what i'm saying many of our fathers did not change themselves they took one bottle of gouda and slapped you when you took one cup did you change you see that because they have become a reality for you and they are saying if i catch you drinking that's the day i'll kill you 
go and buy me a gold job. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you're looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to, God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on X timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tight in now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are what? Seen. But the things that are unseen. I'm giving you a scriptural proof. It said, for the things that are seen are what? Temporal. That means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe this? Pastor Jakes is here. He will testify. Right from when the ministry, this used to be all of us. We form a, Aaron is here. We form a circle. And all just sit down on the floor. I made certain statements like a fool. Right? But today, and listen, this is not even it yet. You wait and see what God will do with us. Oh, I believe him. I believe him. Absolutely. Carve upon my heart This truth that sets me free According to your Do you know your academic situation can change? Please, I'm speaking to somebody. Do you know your destiny can change? If you keep thinking we are the helpless Nigerians, I guarantee you, after 50 years, you will celebrate Golden Jubilee suffering. But I will feed nations. Huh? I may be robbing granot oil as, as, as Vaseline, but a day will come. Why we look not? Brothers and sisters, as I look at you, I don't see the weak you. That's why I say, as I look at you, I see nations. Nations. Who told you you will not be the mother of nations? I'm 30 years. So what? So what about 30 years? Would you stand and say, I saw when I was 23, I know that the Lord told me I'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise. That vision is still there. I am convinced. Yeah. The things that we see are subject to change. One day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body. You just say, hey, this is how I'm going to die. Cancer. And the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people 
may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick because doctor has not told them now doctors don't be don't be sad i'm just saying because you did you did not know it was not your reality many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say ah and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are see i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because i know that i am absolutely in control this has become the mirror to my world this is how i see things i only see things consistent when I'm going for a meeting, I know there will be an outpouring of the Spirit. I don't care whether they have faith or not. I don't care whether they can believe or not. Whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant. When I step there, I know that I bring an atmosphere. I carry my own spiritual climate. Me and the Holy Spirit, a team. The workers in this ministry, have received of this spirit that's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress who guaranteed them that you were coming did you sign a form we having the same spirit of faith as it is written koinonia hear me tonight we are only 23 or 24 days into january you can sit down with this your belief system and you will celebrate christmas in this condition or you can rise up ah but i know people who love god they have died i know people who love god things have happened brothers and sisters we are talking about you here not your neighbor the just shall live by his faith hallelujah do you believe this i read a story of somebody 109 years still alive in fact three women they were even putting makeup 109 years life and strong in the midst of this wicked world they don't expect what do you expect in your life see these are powerful spiritual laws the second law give me five minutes genesis chapter one verse three quickly please the creative power of words i know that we have been taught that words are powerful but I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. It says, and God did what? And God, not and God wished. Not and God expected. Not and God complained. He said the earth was dark and void and formless. And God, the talking spirit, said. The word said there doesn't mean, and God declared. What it meant was, God commanded it to be so. The word said there does not just mean, and God recited. No, God didn't recite anything. Say, I'm healed, I'm healed. That's recitation. You are not talking. What many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation. I'm telling you this. The word confess comes from the Greek word homologio. It's not just repeat what you say. It's you are given an empowerment to say it. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you read the verses down the line. It says, and God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said. And he saw listen to me words are powerful because when you speak a word 
it activates spiritual laws and deactivates other laws. Listen to me. There are many laws that make realities to work. The key to activating their operation is in words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you speak, whether you realize it or not, something is loosed and something is tied. It depends on what is loosed and what is tied. Please follow me. The Bible says, how did he put it now? Whatsoever you bind, right? Do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree. The law of regeneration stop. I command the fertilizer don't enter the root again. He just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So instead of learning all the laws, God gives you the keys that activates them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures. Our time, uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush so that we get up and round up. Psalms 141 verse 3 It says set a watch O Lord before where And do what Keep a door Knowing that every time I speak My mouth didn't just open A door open in the spirit The opening of my mouth Is an opening of a door in the spirit It says set a watch Oh God this my mouth can lead me in trouble So set a watch Set a watch over my mouth. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Zipra to Kashila Kariata Koso Brandi Katayaraba. Vindeke Sila Kariaba. Numbers 14, verse 28. Very quickly. Everyone read. Want to read. 28, 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord. As ye have spoken in my ears, so I will do what? As I hear you say, not wish, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord. He already called you redeemed, but he said, say it. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the anointing of the, the anointed of the Lord say so. They are not reminding themselves. They are activating that reality. Everybody say, when I speak, I activate realities. Say it again. When I speak, I activate spiritual laws. That's right. It depends on what law you activate. But something must be activated. When you understand this, you will know that words are expensive. Let's look at just two more verses. Proverbs 18, verse 21. If we can look at that. Proverbs 18. You can write it down. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Listen. Death and life are where? Did he say death and life are on top of your head? Did he say death and life are? He says death and life are in the 
power the proceeds of the tongue and like a seed they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed the bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower what is the seed meaning every time you speak you sow the seed is that true he said the seed is the word so when i begin to speak even in tongues i'm sowing i'm activating laws in the spirit when i begin to pray my day is blessed in the name of the lord jesus i am lifted i'm activating spiritual laws and i authorize the spirit of god to begin to schedule opportunities to schedule certain things and you find out that after prayer you activate laws of favor as you are stepping out you bump into your destiny helper you call it coincidence the bible calls it life that your tongue released that's why job said what i have feared most has come upon me Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep, how do you keep your life in the spirit? By keeping your mouth. Papa Hagin said this. Kenneth Copeland said this. Those guys said these things. So many people. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. He said I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But I can only advise you. Choose. He said he that keepeth his mouth. Keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, speaking nonsense any day, any time, and saying it does not matter, he says that he shall have what? As a fruit. Brothers and sisters, listen. Ladies, when we are, when we are about to pray, in the midst of your prayer, you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say, no devil. No devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create. And I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know. Many of us have been taught that words are powerful, but what makes it powerful? Words are keys in the spirit. They activate laws. So now, it's not just blind confession. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. As if you are reciting a magic formula. No, that's madness. You speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when I declare that I am blessed, I am activating something. You wait until we have the other series that we have. There are so many things that you will learn this year. Two laws you have learned tonight. The first one is that there are spiritual laws. And that one of the laws, listen, is that to change your outside, you change what is inside. Stop wasting your time. Whatever you don't like outside, get the renewal, the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we'll keep speaking it we'll keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray i don't pray blindly and say lord hey, your will be done i know what his will is his will is not fake his spirit has revealed his will in his word I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We'll pray for just five minutes. 
but i want us to take this serious because as we are praying something will be happening to you lift your voice and thank him for the word the reality of spiritual laws bless him bless him for the word don't trivialize what you have received it has changed kings it has made champions you only arise and shine when your light comes and then the glory of the lord rises upon you hallelujah three quick prayer points prayer point number one you are going to say lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you are just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart Shakata Pratekatele Goto Soto Baladaros Maka Prata Kala Pokoto Preketele Kate Shakata Baladabaka Prekete Baladabos. Please pray inside and in the overflow. Lift your voice and pray. It's the year of the raid. Shakete Lekete Prokoto Baladaba. Holy Spirit overshadow me in a new dimension open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimensions hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change let the word of god change it change my inner reality change my mindset lift your voice and cry passionately your life is at the mercy of this prayer Lord, I desire a new level of excellence, a new level of grace, a new level of possibility in my life. Go ahead and pray. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you as the healer. Help me to believe you are able. Help me to believe you are mighty. Change my mindset. Change my perception. Change my perception about prosperity. Change my perception about protection. Change my perception about spiritual power. Change my perception about my academics. Change my perception about my marriage. Change my perception about my ministry, about my business, about my job, about my husband, about my wife, about my organization. Lift your voice and pray. Your life is a reflection, an eventual reflection of your convictions of your perception oh it's a powerful spiritual law i pray you believe it i pray you believe it hallelujah last prayer point father imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful go ahead and pray imprint in me lord i cancel every negative word that i've spoken in my life i cancel it by the blood of jesus 
confessions I made when I was angry I cancel it by the blood of Jesus dangerous laws I activated that killed favor in my life confessions that killed my prayer life confessions that killed my my integrity lift your voice and pray koinonia outside make sure you are praying no matter how far you are no matter how far you are connect with us in prayer hallelujah hallelujah now find a neighbor and for the next one minute i'd like you to activate laws over that person's life activate favor activate grace activate hunger for spiritual things close every door of witchcraft close every door of failure find a serious neighbor that came to koinonia to pray lift your voice and pray I bless this house in the name of Jesus. I command favor upon your people. I command favor. I command long life. I sow seeds of greatness. I sow seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might. Encounters of favor. Encounters of power. I command no death, no accident, no terrorism, no bomb blast, no witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command every law that has been activated, that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure, to bring woes. I cancel it. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Bless your neighbor. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Let the fountain of the heavens be open for you. Let men look for you. May they bless you. May you become the subject of discussion. I bless your academics. I change your results. I change your genotype. I command promotion to your job. Increase in your ministry. Increase in your business. Increase in your anointing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Listen. What I'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy. Many people speak, but the problem is we, do, we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when you speak. In one minute, I want to release words from your life. Listen, now you know what happens. Listen, demonic spirits, enchantments and spells, all they do is to activate laws against you. That's all that happens. When they enchant things, the Bible says in Job chapter 5 that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Men use their tongues to tie your destiny. Men use their tongues to tie your womb. But I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. Lift your hands and receive this prophecy. In the name that is above all names, I command opportunities. I command opportunities. I command favor in the name of the Son of the Living God. I command favor. I activate favor from the realm of the Spirit. 
the reign of favor the reign of goodness the reign of favor the reign of goodness in the name of Jesus Christ I speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body the power that spoke it into being I curse that power and I command that that infirmity leaves your body now these hands that are lifted may men bring finances to that hand I prophesy it in the name of the Lord Jesus that this week that is coming these hands that are lifted I tell you many of you will return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat in the name that is above all names I release you from that power now hear me anyone here who has been caused by your parents they did not know they were angry but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things to work against you I stand under this apostolic office tonight I reverse that law in the name of Jesus I reverse that law in the name of Jesus for everyone that calls you I bless you I bless you some of us everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn things are so hard a little thing you have to suffer in the name of Jesus in this year of the rain I prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level wherever they are in the name of Jesus the same way wise men saw the star and they went to Jesus with gifts I call them wherever they are may they come to you in the name of Jesus I release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now I stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the God of heaven I command those spells broken may your prayer life resurrect in the name of Jesus hear me the grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning I release that grace upon you ladies whoever has called you weak and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the Lord Jesus I cancel that statement now in the name of Jesus hear me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire in the name of Jesus I change that situation now I change that situation now I change that situation now hear me any human agent responsible for where you are except I am not called of God in the name of Jesus we release a sword of judgment we release a sword of judgment hear me I say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life your finances and your family I command judgment now dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message 
do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.